this is the last week of the semester, so we're in the home stretch. So for week three, we're only going to be doing two sections of new material in my math labs. And that's going to give you, a, for the homework problems and then the test three review, that's going to be about 50 problems that you have to do in math labs for this week. Then you have to do test three. Then you have to do the final review, which is not an assignment in my math labs. It's just a document that you attempt to work on your own. You check your answers in the back. And if anything that you get wrong, I would definitely put some information on your note sheet about those problems that you did not get correct. I would not try to squish information on 48 problems on one note sheet front side only that you're allowed to have. So definitely don't try to squish everything on one sheet. You want to just put the information that you need and not worry about the information you already know. Um, the final exam will only have 25 problems, so in total you'll have 148. Um, this section here is going to talk about how to evaluate logarithms. So in my calculator, there's two buttons here. There's a log button and then there's an LN button. And the first one we're going to talk about is this log button. Notice that it doesn't have a base. When there's no base written here, it's automatically assumed to be a 10. Kind of like when you have a square root, the index is automatically assumed to be a 2. It's the same idea. When you have log with no base, it's automatically a 10, okay? And so what they want us to do is they want us to evaluate these three things using that log button in our calculator. And then I noticed that my math lab gave you some other kinds of problems, so I just want to show you, you literally just type them in your calculator and you get um, the answers. There's always paint or glitter on my table. I guess that's what happens when you have a bunch of kids. Um, so here we go. Log of 10, 1, 2, 3, parentheses. So this one is going to be 4. And then log of 341, close the parentheses. And I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth. So this is going to be about 2.5. Then log of 0 0.06894. So remember, you're always taking the log of something. This is the argument. That's what I'm taking the log of of okay and if I round that one I get negative 1.2 now let's do this one it literally is going to look exactly the way it looks on the paper so times 21 close the parentheses we get about 3.8 here again it's gonna look similar but I'm taking the log of 30 341 and then I'm going to add the log of 15 Make sure that you close the parentheses after the 341. You don't want to open it here and then close it there because now you have a log inside of a log, which is really weird. Make sure that you close it around the argument here and you close the parentheses on the argument there. And that's about 3.7. And the same thing here. Close the parentheses around that argument and close the parentheses around that argument. So log of 528 log of 335 and we get about 0 0.2 okay so that's how you evaluate logs in your calculator pretty nice there will be a couple of problems on the review and the test like that so that's kind of a good comfort um, zone of how many problems get some points right really easily now remember that the base has to be positive and for logarithm space A, where the A is between 0 and 1, is always going to be a negative result. So notice that this number was bigger than 1, this number was bigger than 1, this was big, or I'm sorry, this number was bigger than 1, this was, this was, this was, and this was. And every single one of those turned out to be a positive number. The only one that ended up giving me a negative number was um, when the argument was um, less than so it still had to be positive. Remember, our bases and our arguments have to be positive. But notice that when it was less than 1, it gave me a negative number. So that's all this is saying. It's saying that if that, um, that argument is between 0 and 1, it'll always be a negative. And if it's greater than 1, then it'll be a positive. Now, how do we use, how do we apply logs? What are they used for? Okay. One of the things in science that they're used for is to calculate the pH levels, okay? 
So it says in chemistry, it says pH of a solution is defined as the negative log of this value. And that expression there is a chemistry expression and it's, it represents the hydronium ion concentrate level in moles per liter, okay? The pH value is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. So pure water has a pH of 7.0. Substances with pH levels greater than 7.0 are considered alkaline and substances with pH levels less than 7.0 are acidic. It is customary to round pH levels or pH values to the nearest tenth. Okay, And then once you have it rounded to the nearest tenth, then if it's a number bigger than 7, it's alkaline. And if it's a number less than 7, then it's acidic. Okay, So this first example says find the pH of a solution where the hydronium ion concentrate value is this number. So remember the formula. It's negative log, no base, which means base 10, of this hydronium ion concentrate number. And I can literally type that in my calculator. So I have negative, let me clear that out, negative log, and in the parentheses I'm going to put 6.8 times 10 to the power negative 8 and I'm going to get down from the power and then close my parentheses. And so then that looks exactly like what I have on the paper. So I'm going to hit enter and it said round it to the nearest tenth. So the 6 is going to change this to 7.2. Okay, so that's the pH value for this hydronium ion concentrate number. It and, and it, it didn't ask me this but it ask you in my math labs because this is the pH level or pH value is it alkaline or is it acidic remember if it's greater than 7 then it's alkaline one thing you would learn about me in a real face-to-face uh, -face class is I'm horrible at spelling so let me go back and make sure I can spell this correctly <laughs> okay there you go so this one is alkaline if it were like six point something or five point something, it would be acidic. Now part B is a little bit different. Part B says find the hydronium ion concentrate of a solution with pH equal to this. So I know that the formula is this, right? That's the formula. And I know what the pH is, it's 4.3. What I don't know is this value, and that looks really weird to me, so instead I'm just gonna put a big fat X. That's the unknown, right? Um, and so then if I wanna solve this, the first thing I need to do is get the log by itself. So I'm gonna divide by negative one. And when I do that, I get negative 4.3 equals log of X. Now in order for me to solve an equation that has log in the argument, we always change the forms over. So remember here that the base is actually invisible, but it is, there is a base there, it's a 10. When there's not one shown, it's automatically a 10. So if I change this over, it's gonna be base 10, and a log is equal to an exponent, so this will become my exponent, and then I have no other place but for the x to go on the other side. So originally the x was on the same side with the 10. Now the x is on the other side opposite of the 10. Then now all I have to do is type that in my calculator and I'll have the answer. So negative 4.3. Um, and, oh gosh. So we get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 0, 1, 1, 9. Okay. Now, they always put these numbers in scientific notation, so we're going to have to figure out how to put this in scientific notation. And in order for me to do that, um, I'm going to actually change my mode from normal to science, and then I'm just going to enter again, and it tells me what it is. It's 5 point, and you only go one decimal place, so 5.0 times 10 to the negative 5. 
and that's the hydronium ion concentrate level. So if you've got this calculator, convert it to scientific notation for you. You just have to make sure that your mode is in scientific when you go to do it again. Um, but don't forget to go back and change your mode to normal. Otherwise, all your answers are going to come out in scientific notation, and you don't want that. Oops, I turned it off. Okay. So now we're going to do another pH application problem. So this one says wetlands are classified as bogs, fins, marshes, and swamps based on their pH values. A pH value between 6 and 7.5, so between 6 and 7.5, what is it called? It's called a rich fin. When the pH is between 3 and 6, it is called a poor fin. And if the pH falls to 3 or less, so that would be like negative infinity to 3, right? Then it's called a bog. Now, the hydronium ion concentrate of a water sample of wetlands is this. They want us to classify the wetland. So I first need to figure out what the pH is. So the pH is going to be negative log of this number. So then let me see. Negative log of 4.5 times 10 raised to the negative 3. Oops, I have my parentheses up there it should be down here there we go I get 2.3 and they always round it just to one decimal place the tenth place where does 2.3 live does it live in between 6 and 7.5 no does it live between 3 and 6 no is it a number less than 3 between negative infinity and positive 3 yes so this one would be called a bog that's classifying it determining which interval it's in, and then you can classify it. Now, in addition to the log button, L-O-G, we have one below it that says L-N. That is also a logarithm. It's just a logarithm with base E. Remember that number E? 2.718, blah, 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 right? It kept going. So when you have log base E, that's just written as L-N. Because E is called the natural number, so when it's your base, it's called the natural logarithm, okay? And so for all of these problems, again, I'm literally just typing them in my calculator. So LN, second to get the E button of 4, get down, close my parentheses, I get 4. LN of 341 is about 5.8. LN of 0 0.06894 is about negative 2.7. Let's see over here. LN parentheses 98 over 16 and get out of there, close it. Oops, I got a double parentheses. I think I typed in a parentheses when one automatically opens. 1.8. So you're literally just typing it in what you see, but notice these don't have parentheses on them. You need to put them there. So LN of 41, close it. It's very important that you close it. LN of 98, about 8.3. And then again, the same thing here. Make sure you close those parentheses. 92, close, minus LN of 18. And you get 1.6. Now one thing I want to bring to your attention Notice that they did 341 and 0 0.0689. Those are the same numbers that we had here. But because the base was different, look, for 341 and log, we got 2.5. For 341 and LN, we got 5.8. So it does make a difference which one you're using, okay? So make sure that you're not clicking the wrong button when you evaluate these. If it's log with no base, great use the LOG button, this one. If it's a log with the base E or an LN, you have to use the LN button. 
Now this is the change of base formula. No matter what my base is here, I can always change the base to any base I want. And since I have a calculator that does two particular bases, you probably want to change your base to one of those two. So you probably want to change your base to just log base 10, right? Or you want to change it to LN because those are the only two buttons that you have in your calculator, okay? And it doesn't matter which one of these two bases you use and which one you put in the calculator, coincidentally, the number comes out to be the same. Now notice the pattern here. The log of the argument goes on the top. No matter what base you use, the argument goes on top, and then the old base will go at the bottom, okay? And you have to do the log or the ln of both. So for instance, this problem, before now, I couldn't type it in my calculator. But now I can. I can do log of 20 over log of 4. Or I can do ln of 20 over ln of 4. And I'm going to do both just so that you can see you get the exact same, and they want us to round it to four decimal places. So we get the exact same answer. So look here, if I do fraction, log of 20 over log of 4, I get this value, 2.16096. Now what happens if I do this fraction? ln of 20 over ln of 4, and it comes out to the exact same number. So it doesn't matter which one you use, you just have to use the same on the top and bottom. Either use LOG on top and bottom, or use LN on top and bottom. I prefer to use LN because it's obvious that I've changed the base. When I see LOG here and then all of a sudden I changed it to LN, it's obvious that I changed the base there, okay? So um, the answer to four decimal places, that's actually gonna make the nine go to a 10. So it's gonna be 2.1610. Now if I do this one, I'm gonna do LN of 0.7 argument over ln of the old base. And we get negative 0. Point, that's going to change that to 6. And we're done. Now, one last thing before I end this video is uh, remember in 4.2 we had this equation. And in this equation, we didn't know how to evaluate this. And in that video, I told you, later on, you will have a way to evaluate that, okay? But unfortunately, we had to solve that problem the long way, which was to change it to an exponential, make the bases match, and then set the two exponents equal to each other. Now that we have this information about changing the base, this problem is a lot easier than it was before. All I had to do was use the calculator. I could have changed the base here and done ln of the argument over ln of the old base. And then if I stick that in my calculator, ln of the square root of 6, get out of the house, close the parentheses, and ln of 36, and close the parentheses. I get 1 fourth. Wow, right? 1 fourth. That's actually the answer when we did it the long way as well. Okay? And so you can get, you can do problems like that now. Back in that section, we couldn't, we had to do it the other way. But now that we know about the change of base, if you do have a problem like this on a review or on a test, just use the change of base and you can um, solve for x a lot easier than the way we did it in 4.2. Okay, well, that was the end. I know it took me about 18, 20 minutes, so, um, but that's, that's all we've got here for this um, section, so just one video.